Let's pray together. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I bring your sons and your daughters, I bring your people, ministers and members, I bring everyone before you now. And I pray the complete work of Christ will be done in every life in Jesus' name. Glorify yourself in every life. Glorify Christ in every life. And the power, the strength, the understanding that makes us live a God-glorifying life appear, appear to everyone and do it in every life, Lord. Thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can sit down. Now we're talking about Jesus We've looked at him from A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W. Now it remains X, Y, Z. And when we are through, the complete work of Christ will be done in your life. I'm looking at Jesus, the cross, bearing yoke breaker, lifting Zion to its zenith. That he is Christ that comes to your life. He bore the cross. He bore that cross for you. And he was crucified on the cross. And the X, that's the cross, the cross bearing Christ is the yoke breaker. And it leads the Zionists up onto our zenith. Look at Isaiah chapter 10. I'm reading from verse 27. And it shall come to pass in that day that his body shall be taken away from of thy shoulder and his yoke from thy neck and the yoke your yoke shall be broken shall be destroyed shall be cancelled shall be nullified because of the anointing because of the anointing and the Lord today will break every yoke in your life. Look at three things we're looking at in the message. Number one, we're looking at the cross-bearing Savior. The cross, we write it as X. The X-bearing, the cross-bearing Savior to save sinners and sustain our steadfastness. Number two, Jesus the yoke-bearing Lord, offering us rest and soul-quickening spiritual spirituality. Look at number three. Jesus is the Zion-destined king, possessing authority over the uttermost parts of the earth. Look at number one. Number one, Jesus, the cross-bearing Savior, to save sinners and to sustain our steadfastness. The three things we're looking at under that, number one, number one is the cross-crucified substitute, enabling us to be crucified to self, crucified to shame in society. Number two is the X-ray such a, you know, the X-ray, something inside that nobody can see ordinarily. They say, go and do the scan. And then you go under that X-ray. The X-ray in such a of hearts were final heavenly sentence. Number three, the Xerox in sun. Xerox. You know, we used to have that Xeroxing machine. And then when you place the copy there, it will bring the Xerox copy for you on Christ. 
is the one that reproduces his life in us. The Xeroxin son reproduces similar sincere sons like the son. Look at number one. Number one, we're looking at the cross crucified substitute enabling us to be crucified to self or shame in society. We're looking at um, looking at Looking at Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2. I'm reading here from verse 20. In verse 20 it says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. He has been crucified on the cross. And he tells us that we too, we must bear our cross. And as you bear the cross, and you bear his cross, his cross will set you completely free. In Jesus' name. It says that I'm crucified. You come to Christ, you're identified with him with Christ. Nevertheless, I still live. And yet it's not I who lives but Christ liveth in me. If you're crucified with Christ, if you're identified with Christ, Christ lives in you. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Amen. The life I now live in the flesh. I live by the face of the Son of God. And he says, it's not I that liveth, but Christ liveth in me. You believe that? I said, do you believe that? Look at this young man who came to the retreat and had everything about Jesus. And as we're going out, we'll see him punching somebody, fighting with somebody. I will say, friend, come. Were you not at the retreat learning about? Yes, of course. Did you not hear we give our lives to Christ? Yes, I did. And I'm crucified with Christ. And anything I do now is Christ who lives in me, who is doing it. Does Christ fight? <laughs> Look at that person. He's smoking and puffing out all the smoke. I say, come on here. Come, come. Are you not in Christ? Of course I am. I'm saved. I need to tell you, I'm even sanctified. What's that? Coming out of your mouth while well, it's the smoke of my cigarette of my marijuana. But it says, Christ liveth in me. And the life I now live is not me. It's Christ that liveth in me. Does Christ in you smoke marijuana? Why are you then saying you are smoking and then you are still in Christ? I find somebody is going into, you know, that dark place. They call it brothel, hotel, whatever. And he goes in there. And it's done, you know, what sinners do. And just as he was coming out, he came right into your hands. And you see, I think I saw you somewhere. Have we met you before? Maybe you saw me at the, you know, GCK. You saw me at the, aha, uh -huh, I remember now, I saw you. And in fact, when he said, if you are giving your life to the Lord, raise up your hand. I think I was the one that came near you and I took your details. Yes, I can recognize that now. Are you born again? Of course, I'm born again. Nothing you want to do inside there. Christ liveth in me. Is it Christ that is doing that? Does Christ commit fornication? God forbid, God forbid, when we're saved, we live the crucified life. All those things we did in the past, 
All those sins were engaged in in the past. All those sins are gone because I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. We're looking at number two here. Look at number two. Number two is the extreme searcher of hearts. A final heavenly sentence is the one that searches our heart. And is the one that pronounces the final word, the final sentence on the hypocrite, on the pretender, and the final sentence on the real true child of God. We're looking at Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 9. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know each? Look at verse 10. It says, I, the Lord, search the heart. Is the one that extracts our heart, our life. And nothing can be hidden from that extra. What's inside the bone, the x-ray will reveal. What's inside the lungs, the x-ray will reveal. What's inside the heart, the x-ray will reveal. And God says he is the one that searches the heart. I try the race even to give every man according to his ways and according to his fruits. The fruit of his doing. He knows us. That's why in Psalm 139. Psalm 139 verse 23. Search me, O God. I bring myself under your extra. So that you can discover everything that is wrong. Everything that is evil. And then bring them right. Search me, O God. And know my heart. Try me. And know my thoughts. Then in verse 24 and see. If there be any wicked way in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. It lead you in the way everlasting in Jesus name. Look at number three here. Number three is the Xeroxing son. Reproducing similar sincere sons like the son is the one that comes to make in us the image of his only begotten son. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, we're looking at verse 18. But we all, children of God, but we all, this who are saved, but we all, this who are placed our faith in Christ, we all, with open face, beholding as in a mirror, as in a glass, the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image, from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. The Lord will produce his life, his nature, in every one of us in Jesus' name. Amen. We're coming to point number two here. Point number two is Jesus, the yoke-bearing Lord, offering us rest and soul quietening spiritual serenity. We're looking at Matthew chapter 11. We're reading from verse 28. Matthew chapter 11. We're looking at verse 28. Come unto me. Can the doctor do anything to you before you come to him? Can he tell us your dress before you come to him for measurement? Can the person who is cooking a good food feed you until you come to the table? You must come. You must come. All the good things that God has done and provided for us to have them, you must come. 
But you know, if you are just there, and you say, I came to do this. I came to clean up the compound. Let, as you clean the compound, let him clean your heart. And you have to come unto him. While the word of God is going on, you have to drop the cleaning of the compound and, you know, the doing of this and the doing of that. And then you have a chance to come unto him. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Somebody shout amen. Look at verse 29. It says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me for I am meek and lowly in heart and you shall find rest unto your souls. In verse 30 it says for my yoke is easy and my body is light. We're looking at three things here. Number one is the, the yielded Jesus willing as our substitute to be spotless sacrifice for all sinners. Yielded himself, the yielded Jesus, who yielded himself and atonement for our sin. Number two, the yoke breaking Jesus, supernaturally shattering all satanic strongholds. And that satanic stronghold you shut out of your life in Jesus' name. Either yesterday, today, forever the same Jesus with inexhaustible supply and solution to every and in every situation. Look at number one. Number one, the yielded Jesus willingly yielded himself as a substitute to be the spotless sacrifice for all sinners. Yielded himself. Look at John chapter 18. I'm reading from verse 3. John 18 verse 3. Judas then, having received a bunch of men and officers from the chief priests and the Pharisees cometh with see with lanterns and torches and weapons. Look at verse 4. In verse 4, Jesus therefore knowing all things that should come upon him went forth, he went forth to them and said unto them, Whom Seek ye. Look at verse 5. In verse 5, they answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus saith unto them, I am he. You want to arrest me? I am he. You want to place the crown of thorns? I am he. You want to lay the stripes at my back? I am he. I see that you are going to the judgment place. You want to judge me unrighteously. I am he. You want to crucify me. I am he. He surrendered himself. He yielded himself. I am he. And Judas also would betray him. Stood with them. Look at verse 6. In verse 6, here we are told... As soon then as he had said unto them, I am he, they went backward and fell on the ground. If he wanted to escape, he could have escaped. They fell on the ground. If he wanted to run away and avoid the crucifixion, the sacrifice on the cross of Calvary, he could have done that. He stayed there. Got them up. Look at verse 7. In verse 7, then I see them again. Whom seek ye? And they say, Jesus of Nazareth. Look at verse 8. In verse 8, Jesus answered, I have told you that I am he. 
If therefore ye seek me, let this go their way. He yielded himself so that he'll be the sacrifice for your sin. And he wants us now to yield ourselves unto him. Not yield to Satan anymore. Not yield to the flesh anymore. But now to yield completely unto him. Look at number two here. Number two is the yoke bearing Jesus supernaturally shattering all satanic stronghold. All satanic stronghold. Says, be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. When you come to the Lord, he breaks that yoke that ties you with the unbeliever. Be not, do not be on, on, be not be on, on yoked with the unbelievers in marriage, in business, in character, in behavior, in their night parties. Do not be unequally yoked together with them. Take the yoke of Christ on you. Look at Matthew chapter 11 verse 29. Verse 29 it tells us take my yoke. Drop the other yoke. The yoke of idolatry. The yoke of slavery. The yoke of bondage. And the yoke of Marriage with the unbeliever, it's a yoke, it's a yoke. Drop it and then take its yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart and ye shall find rest unto your souls. Amen over there. Amen in the whole congregation. Look at number three here. Number three is... Is yesterday, today, forever the same Jesus with the forever Jesus with the inexhaustible supply a solution in every situation. What Jesus did in the past is still able to do today. Amen. Because Jesus Christ in Hebrews chapter 13, reading from verse 8, said Jesus Christ the same yesterday and today and forever. He saved sinners in the past. He's saving sinners today. He sanctified believers in the past. Is sanctifying believers today. He filled sanctified souls with the Holy Ghost in the past. He's still filling sanctified believers with the Holy Ghost today. He broke all the yokes of the devil and destroyed all the works of the devil in the past. Is still doing it today. Is the yesterday, today, forever the same Jesus and his supply, his power, and his manifestation in every situation is inexhaustible. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. What he did before, he will do in your life today. We're coming to point number three now. Number three, Jesus, the Zion, destined king, possessing authority over the uttermost parts of the earth. Look at Psalm 2. I'm reading from verse 6. Psalm 2. We're reading from verse 6. It says, Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. Who is that king? Look at verse 7. In verse 7, I will declare the decree. The Lord has said unto me, Thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee. And then in verse 8, in verse 8, it says, Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen 
the unbelievers, the sinners, the pagans. And I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. That's why anywhere you are in the world, even to the uttermost parts of the earth, we need to travel and travel and travel from Jerusalem before we get there. The Lord is king over all the parts, all the uttermost parts of the earth. We're coming to three things here. Number one, we're looking at the Zacchaeus seeming Jesus offering salvation to the vilest of sinners. Number two, the zealous Christ passionately keeping his temple pure and holy separate from all sin. Number three, Zion's deliverer, the soon coming desire of all nations with salvation and uh, sovereignty. Look at number one. Number one uh, is the Zacchaeus saving uh, Christ. The Zacchaeus saving uh, Jesus. You see, Zacchaeus in his day was one of the vilest of sinners. And if you had the vilest of sinners in your community, as he saved Zacchaeus, he will save you. Change your life. And all the things that were wrong in your life before, everything, he'll turn them right side up. Look at, um, we're looking at Luke chapter 19, I'm reading from verse 5. In verse 5, he tells us, And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and he saw him and said, Zacchaeus, make haste, come down. For today, I must abide at thy house. Today, it will abide in your heart. I said it will abide in your heart. And the people began to grumble. It's going to be with a sinner. Many people are always looking away from their own sin. They excuse their own sin. And they exaggerate the sins of other people. It's going to be guessed to him that is a sinner. Look at verse 8. In verse 8, we're told, And Zacchaeus stood and said, Unto the Lord, behold, Lord, of my goods I give to the poor. And if I've taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him for for he said, Yes, I'm a sinner. And I've taken things from people, but I'm ready now to make right my way. Look at verse 9. In verse 9, and Jesus said unto him, this day is salvation come to this house. Where is salvation coming today? I said, where is salvation coming today? That salvation comes to you today in Jesus' name. Today is this salvation. Today is this new life. Today is this transformation come to this heart, and that will be fulfilled in your life in Jesus' name. For so much as he also is a son of Abraham. Look at verse 10. In verse 10 it says, For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which is lost. You are lost temporarily. You will not be lost forever. Because he has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Look at number two here. Number two, the zealous Christ passionately keeping his temple pure, holy, and separate from all sin. You know, when you get saved, you become the temple of the Lord. And he wants to dwell in you. 
And the Father God in heaven wants to dwell in you. And the Holy Ghost also wants to dwell in you. But he is Holy Ghost. Holy Spirit. He has to make that place holy. Before you will dwell there. And Christ zealously, passionately, cleansed the temple. So that his temple will be the place of prayer and not the robber's den. And the disciples realized that this is he of whom it is written. The zeal of his house has consumed me. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, reading from verse 16, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, reading from verse 16, do ye not that ye are the temple of God and the spirit of God dwelleth in you? Verse 17, verse 17, if any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy, for the temple is holy. Which temple ye are? You are the temple of God. And that temple must remain holy, remain clean, remain pure, and no works of the flesh will be allowed in any part of your body, touching, tasting, kissing sin, and embracing sin, all that will vanish out of your life in Jesus' name. For the temple of God is holy. Which temple ye are? Look at number three here. Number three, he is Zion's deliverer. The soon coming desire of all nations was salvation and sovereignty. Look at Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 11 rather. In Romans chapter 11, we're looking at verse 26. And it says, and so all Israel shall be saved. As it is written, there shall come out of Zion the deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. He comes to you today. I said he comes to you today. And he'll turn all ungodliness out of your life. Anywhere Christ comes, anywhere Christ dwells, he preserves that place he dwells in so that ungodliness, unrighteousness, uncleanness will not have any way there. And I come now to present you unto the Lord. And you also present yourself totally unto the Lord. And I will take away all uncleanness. Amen. Amen. He'll take away all unrighteousness. Amen. He'll take away all ungodliness. And he'll make you as pure as purity can be. Purer than diamond. In Titus chapter 2. Titus chapter 2. We're looking at verse 14. It tells us. Titus chapter 2 verse 14. Thank you. Who gave himself for us. You remember? We personalize the promise, the provision of the Lord. Who gave himself for me. That he might redeem us. Might redeem me from all iniquity. And purify unto himself. A peculiar people. Zealous of good works. He'll take that kind of dull, dormant attitude, he'll take it away from your life. And then he'll give you the zeal of the Savior himself. And you'll be zealous of good works. We've gone through Alpha to Omega, A to Z of Jesus. May Jesus fill your heart. Fill your life. Reproduce Heaven's attribute in your life in Jesus' name. 
Give him chance to walk. He'll walk miraculously in your life. Let's rise up now and talk to the Lord in prayer. Rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer and say, Lord, here am I. Everything you have revealed concerning Christ reproduce in me. He will. 